It's an early start for competitors arriving for a full day's motorsport at the BARC Southwest Centre's popular hill climb in the heart of the rolling Wiltshire downland. Situated on a working farm run by the John Hitchings Partnership, since it first ran back in 1967, Gerson Downhill Climb caters for competitors in all types of car, from road saloons to 650 horsepower single seaters. Caterhams, Westfields and derivatives are a very popular choice as they are in so many disciplines throughout the world of club motorsport. The essence of speed hill climbing is just that, speed. The sole object is to traverse a section of narrow twisting track, usually no wider than 12 feet, in the shortest time possible. The 1057 yards of the Gersten track takes a top single seater less than 26 seconds. And although by definition the finish line of a hill climb is higher than the start, Gersten's downhill plunge off the start line is unique in the sport. Some four seconds or so later, the top single seaters are nudging 140 miles an hour as they lift for Hollow Bend, while in the tight carousel complex they haul off the speed to around 25 miles an hour before hitting over 150 miles an hour across the finish line. No motorsport could take place without marshals and here Gerson's efficient trackside team is preparing for a day on the bank. And becoming a marshal is the best way to get as close to the action as possible without going to the expense of running a competition car. It's a vital job. Without marshals the sport quite simply couldn't exist. Providing transport for marshals is just one of the jobs for Peugeot main dealers Gates of Brockenhurst who have been loyal supporters of Gerson for more years than they care to remember. Company principal Jonathan Gates is a regular and extremely successful competitor. Gates also sponsor the class-based Gerson Championship, run over four rounds. Together with the BARC Top 10 Challenge, based on outright fastest times at each meeting, competition is always intense at the Wiltshire Hill Climb. So with marshals in place and spectators eager for action, let's take a look at some of the competition at a typical Gates Gerston Championship round. First to the line in the Mark Sports Car class is Jonathan Gardner with the Lotus Elise. And Jonathan just coming up to the start line now, spinning the rear tyres to get some heat into them for the best possible start. He's got the start lights to his left, the red and the green lights. He starts on the green light and then it's down this unique Gersten downhill start into Hollow Bend. And the start line marshal just lining the car up now. He's waiting for the green light and there it is, in goes the clutch, away it goes the Lotus Hill, he's down the hill to Hollow Bend and he'll be uh, approaching the 90 mile an hour mark at this point before coming into this tricky left hander but he keeps his foot on the power and the road keeps on going left until into the braking area for this tricky carousel complex, so it's a swoop now uphill on the right hand bend and then the slowest part of the course at the carousel hairpin over Deer's Leap before coming into the crucial left-hander at Ashes Bend. It's important to get a good slingshot out of this left-hander because it's uphill all the way to the finish now over Burke's rise and Gersten stinging the tail over the finish line is in fact that slight left-right S-Bend but uh, the Elise still taking it flat. Next to the line, Steve Butts from Abingdon with his Elise, a, a highly modified uh, car this, and Steve is in fact looking for his third successive Gersten Hill Climb Championship. The uh, Gate Sponsor Series has been won for the last two years by Steve, and uh, he'll be looking for some serious championship points here. Waits for the green light now. A lot of modifications to this car, including aerodynamic ones, as you can see, and a rear wing. Away goes the Illies now, down the hill towards Hollow Bend. Looks like a good run for Steve. He keeps his foot in it as he goes round the left-hander. The record stands to Steve at 34.13. Just gets the back end out as he comes into the bottom of the carousel, uh, but a nice tidy line around, line around the top part of the complex, out of Ashes Bend, and once again foot hard down over the top of Burke's Rides. It's looking good for Steve, 34-1-3 is his record, looks like a class winning run, and he's over the line, it's better than that, it's a new class record, 33.78 seconds for defending Gersten champion Steve Butts. On now to the 1400cc modified production saloon class, which is largely dominated by minis. In fact, the only non-mini in the class is John White from St. Hostel 
in the Suzuki Swift GTI. He's up against some pretty tough opposition. Gersten Championship leader Jim White, uh, Neil Masters and Cranbourne engine builder Steve Harris to mention but a few but uh, here's John White now waiting for the green light in the Suzuki Swift off down the hill into Hollow Bend really pushing the car hard now he'll be looking for a run in around about uh, 38 seconds class record stands to Andrew Simmons at 36.8 with his many but uh, here's John White now really pushing hard into Carousel through the complex safely using the minimum of road and uh, now into the final left-hander at Ashes Bend. Always a crucial bend for the uh, launch up over Burke's Rise. Heading for the finish line now. John White looking for a 38 second run which he's got 38.20 for John White. Next to the line, Neil Masters with the Austin Mini. Neil from South Sea and supporter of this class through his company Surf Interactive. Neil, in fact, the uh, son of Graham Masters, who's sharing the car today and who competed in the very first Gersten Downhill Climb back in 1967 in a Ford Anglia. But uh, here's uh, son Neil now with the Austin Mini, looking for perhaps a 37 second run. He knows he's gonna have Steve Harris and Gersten Championship leader Jim White breathing down his neck. This car of Neil Masters, you can see the uh, Carburetta trumpets on the front of the car, the new Brian Slark seven port head on this particular machine. Neil really pressing on now round the long left hander before Hollow Bend, hard on the brakes now into the right hander just touches the curves either side it's a good tidy run from Neil Masters looks quick as he comes into Ashes Bend now once again hard on the power of Burke's rise the car darts from side to side looking for a 37 second run to get on the pace and as he heads for the finish line the clock stop on 37.25 Steve Harris to the line now, one of the most experienced competitors in the class. He's been racing, hill climbing and sprinting for many, many years now. Local engine builder from Cranbourne, responsible for quite a few of the engines in this uh, particular class as he gets away from the line now in the Morris Mini. Regular competitor at Gerson Down for many years, always up at the sharp end of the class which as we mentioned is uh, predominantly mini dominated. He's into carousel now with a bit of puff of smoke, hops up over the curb and out of the complex. Heads now for that final crucial left-hander at Ashes but uh, keeps the carts nicely on the tarmac. As the finish line now comes into sight, that tricky S bend over the finish. And Steve Harris over the line in 37.91. One of the cars which Steve Harris builds the engine for, as you can see from the side there, is this uh, particular machine of Jim White. Distinctive rear radiator car, this. Uh, also running aero tunnels, unusual for a Mini, but the car going well. Its first appearance at Gerson Down this year. Uh, very quick times, in fact, so quick that uh, Jim White is currently leading the gates of Brockenhurst, Gerson Down, Hill Climb Championship with the car. Potential class winner here, but to do that, he's going to be looking for a low 37 second run. He's already into the complex at Carousel now. Dives through the final right hander and up into Ashes with this uh, radical machine. But it looks good for Jim White, the championship leader, as he heads for the finish line. Coming up now and waiting for the time is it a low 37 and it is indeed 37.13 that's another class win for championship leader jim white on to the sports car equivalent of the small modified production cars and the 1400 cc division now largely dominated by motorcycle engine cars in fact Mark Barnett leaving the line, the man from Swindon with his Westfield Mega Blade, which features the Honda Fireblade engine. A little bit down on capacity to some of the cars in this class, just 893 cc's. 
but uh, Mark goes well in the car. Father John shares this car as well at uh, Gersten Down. And Mark now bouncing over the curbs, getting the car a little bit sideways on the exit of the top part of the carousel, but safely into Ashes Bend, brushes the curb on the exit now before full power over the top of Burke's Rise. Heading for the finish line, Mark Barnett, and he stops the clocks in 36.01. The hands on the wheel now are those of Ian Gaskell from Borden. Uh, Ian's Westfield, in fact, not a bike engine car. One of the few in the class which uh, features a car engine. This a Cosworth BDH 1380cc. Ian Gaskell always quick though and uh, able to take on the bike engine cars with this machine. Had a bit of an upset at Wiscombe Park last season where he uh, inverted the car but uh, safely back in action now. But he runs a little bit wide though on the exit of Carousel and uh, really pressing on now over the top of Perks Rise, chasing those bike engine cars with the Cosworth engine machine and the finish line in sight and Ian Gaskell stops the clocks in 35.24. Back to bike engines again, and this time it's Barry Drake up from Hailing Island with his Westfield Mega Booster. That's the 1300cc Suzuki Hayabusa powered car. A good launch off the start line, down the hill into Hollow Bend for Barry Drake up. Keeps it flat through the long left-hander. And this long right-hander following it is still tricky. The G-forces are still operating as you come into the braking area for Carousel, which he negotiates tidily now. Gets right over onto the right-hand side of the road for the approach into Ashes. And now this all-important slingshot out of the final left-hander up the quite steep hill. Burke's rise towards that S-bend over the finish line. Barry Drake up. Stops the clocks in 36.88. Westfield cars built by Chris Smith at King Swinford up in the Midlands, very popular in this class together with the Caterhams and yet another Westfield on the line now. This is Anthony Orchard from nearby Wareham with his uh, Suzuki Hayabusa power car, 1400cc, fuel injected uh, bike engine and Anthony Orchard then time to beat so far in the class, looks like that 35.24 from Ian Gaskell and Orchard certainly on course to do that as he dives into the carousel complex just nudging the curbs and gets the back out on the top part of the hairpin but looks a good tidy run from Anthony Orchard now as he heads up over Burke's rise towards the finish 35.24 is the time to beat and Anthony Orchard well clear with a 33.92 Two litre saloon cars now, and it's Graham Rudge from Newport in Monmouthshire with his uh, two litre Pinto engine Ford Escort. The engine built by West Countryman Mark Schillerber, as are several of the cars in the southwest. And Graham Rudge probably won't mind us saying he's been uh, in the sport for many years, a septuagenarian, son. Mike also uh, hill climbs at Westfield who we'll see a little bit later on but uh, one or two handling problems with the car last season which have now been sorted out and Mike Rudge another good tidy line around the complex just gets the tail out as so many people do at the hairpin at the top of carousel and at Ashes but he's safely heading over the top of Burke's Rise now for the finish line in the RS2000 and stops the clocks on 39.09 Mark II Escorts are very popular in sprinting and hill climbing and this is the example of Carl Stevens from Andover running the 2 litre Anderson Pinto in his example a good launch off the line as he snakes the back of the car under acceleration down the hill now into Hollow Bend we're on board with Carl Stevens now as he takes the flat left hander keeps the power on round the uh, long bend before coming into the deceptively quick uphill part of carousel again sliding the back of the car around with abandon 
typical pose for these uh, Mark II escorts. He's out of ashes now, another tail slide. Not for nothing is he known as the fastest gear change in the West, Carl Stevens. He's already up near the finish line now and he takes the lead with a time of 36.74. to Mark 1 now on the line as Mark Skeets brings his Anderson Pinto powered version up to the start and Mark's got problems he's had the gearbox out a couple of times the car keeps jumping out of gear and he's really been unable to rectify this so he's actually steering one-handed and holding the car in gear at the same time as you can hear as he comes right up onto the limiter in third approaching hollow Still in third gear now, he comes into the braking area for Carousel, the car snakes sideways, he's having to steer, don't forget, one-handed, holding the gear lever in position all the time, and the, it's a little bit wild as he runs out of uh, track on the exit of Ashes, but he keeps the car on the black stuff, now he's got to get it over that uh, S-bend over the finish line, puff of dust from the left, but uh, round to the right and crosses the line and it's good enough for the class lead on 35.66. Andy Bascom now, number one seed in the class. He will have that record of Richard Marshall's in his sights, 34.37. He's got a good chance with this uh, rebuilt engine from Connell Competition Engines running on Titan roller throttle bodies. And he's down the hill now charging into hollow bend with this uh, warrior engine this is the twin cam pinto conversion 34.37 then the target for andy bascom but he's only got to beat 35.66 to snatch the lead away from mark skeet as he charges into ashes bend and sets off towards the finish line a good tidy run from andy bascom looks like it could well be a 34 will it be near the record he's over the line now well, it's not a record, but it is the class win for Bascom on 34.78. So let's take a run up Gerson down in the passenger seat of Andy Bascom's Warrior Powered Escort. Away from the line, now we're faced with this unique downhill plunge into Hollow Bend, which is taken almost flat, just brushing the curves, but the corner keeps on going to the left. Very deceptive this as we come hard on the brakes now to this uh, Faster than you think, uphill right-hander into carousel. Now round the tight right-hander at the top, working hard at the steering wheel, just brushing a rumble strip on the exit. Now it's the long haul up over the top of Burke's rise to the finish. Essential to get a good slingshot out of Ashes Bend for maximum power over the S Bend across the finish line. Now it's the uh, long tour down to the holding paddock, which has been improved in recent years, as have many other aspects of the venue by. BARC Southwest Centre. Good tarmac surface, there's plenty of room to park up because of course all cars have to come to the top of the hill and park before being returned to the paddock for the next batch of cars. And Andy Bascom brings the Warrior Powered Escort to a halt. <laughs> 